Hi, this is uh, Trevor Lund of RevTrev.com and this is Ministry Coaching with RevTrev. You know, another question that I often get asked is, do I need to incorporate my ministry? Now, right off the start, I need to let you know that uh, I'm not a lawyer. I do suggest that you ask a lawyer. Number two, um, what I know, I know from the province of Alberta in Canada, because in Canada, it's different from province to province, and I don't have all the details about how it differs. I know that even uh, churches in uh, some provinces don't need to be incorporated. But I'll just go over basically what incorporation means and how it can be done here in Alberta, because wherever you are, uh, I'm getting people from all over the world watching this, so I don't even know <laughs> how it it works where you are. But uh, hopefully this tip will give you the, at least a direction to go. As I'm talking, my video camera is being covered with mosquitoes. If you see them, you might see me swat them. Like that. Anyway. Um, yeah, do, does your... In, in, uh, does your ministry need to be incorporated? It really depends on who you're with, what your denominational standards are, what your organizational standards are. Basically, what incorporation it does is, is it makes the ministry its own legal entity. So what does that mean? That means that it lives longer than you. That means that you have uh, a, a board in place. That generally means... Um, like when I'm, uh, I was a pastor and people came in, if uh, it, it gave me some encouragement that they were coming in with an established ministry, that they had a board that they were accountable to, that they belonged to some other uh, organization or my organization, and um, I knew them to be people who were accountable to somebody else. That's the practical sense. Uh, another practical sense is. Um, I really hope you're not in any ministry where you could easily get sued. Uh, counseling ministries, you definitely get incorporated because you want that protection of, of having that, um, excuse me, having that protection of a corporation. So the corporation can, can get sued, but you personally would have to really be uh, like malpractice before you could get sued. Um, how can you incorporate in Alberta? Basically, in, in Canada, um, you need to be incorporated somehow before you can become a, get your charity status. So, in Canada, you can incorporate provincially or you can incorporate federally. If you incorporate provincially, it's basically your ministry is, is done provincially. If it, you incorporate fed, federally, it means you're, you're set up to have offices across the country. You can do international ministry if you incorporate in a province or if you incorporate in the nation. It, international ministry doesn't matter so much. What it does matter is where you can have offices. So if you want to have offices across the country in Canada, you incorporate federally. If you want to um, uh, do local ministry, like a church, it, you incorporate provincially. If it's a ministry to churches in your area, you corporate, incorporate provincially. You, uh, let's say your ministry grows and um, you think you just want to be local, but it spreads nationally and internationally, and you, in time you want to incorporate federally, you can deal with it then. Like it's, it's, it is a lot of work, um, and if you know that's where your vision goes, it might pay to incorporate federally right away. But, um, again, talk to a lawyer, they'll get you set up with that. <laughs> now. <laughs> Uh, in Canada, you need to be incorporated before you can get your charity, uh, become a, a charitable institution according to Revenue Canada. So if you incorporate pr provincially as a nonprofit, then you apply to Revenue Canada to get your charity status. Now what does a charity status mean? It means that you can give receipts for donations given to you. Um, it's uh, tax you can give tax deductible receipts you can always give receipts <laughs> but receipts that people can use on their income tax to, de to tax to, to deduct it and quite frankly in Canada we have a really incredible system of 
uh, donations, um, what Revenue Canada allows, and, and it's it's highly monitored. Like you're going to get audited. You're going to have your you, you know, like you, you, make sure you do your books above the board, right? Like don't even worry about it because you're going to be doing it right. Uh, get talk to an accountant, talk to a lawyer, get it set up right. Um, do you need to incorporate right away? Again, <laughs> that's usually the question that that it's answered. No, you don't. Uh, a lot of churches I know we take on people who are in ministry um, that that have a, a parachurch ministry in mind or a, a larger interchurch ministry that they're doing, and um, they're more than happy to say, "Listen, you come on as, as an employee. Uh, your salary will be the donations that come in plus." You know the rest goes into your ministry fund and whatever however that they work that out and any church is well within their legal rights unless you're in, in a denomination that doesn't allow it <laughs> okay i'm just thinking there are denominations that will not allow that all it all goes through the denomination it doesn't go through the local church so you've got to talk to your local pastor and figure that out um how do you how do you incorporate in the first place well you can incorporate as a society you can incorporate as uh, a nonprofit business. Um, a society, you need five non-related people. This is in Canada, this is in Alberta. Five non-related people. Let's say it this way, five people, the majority of which cannot be related to each other. So you can't have your brother and your wife and you on the board and two other people. You can have um, you and your wife and three other friends um, and one of them's a married couple, that would make five. That's a society, and that works in Alberta. What um, a business, uh, a nonprofit business, you can get two people to start a business, to, to incorporate a business in Alberta. And uh, it's a nonprofit, you still go through the same process of becoming a charity. Um, yeah, it's a lot of work. Do you need to do it right away? You can work under a trade name. And uh, I've got horses coming up again. Okay, it's really getting dangerous out here for me to be on a horse trail when uh, horses are coming around. <laughs> so I'm just going to call it a day. Uh, this is uh, Trevor Lund of RevTrev.com. And this has been another uh, uh, video coaching, ministry coaching with RevTrev. I'm Trevor Lund. Take care.